Hi everyone, I'm Natalie Reyna with Identity Talks and today I'm joined by our EVP of Product and Solutions, Grady Summers. The name of the game today is Zero Trust. Zero Trust first entered the security landscape in 2009, but it wasn't until a few years later that Google announced they were going to implement this model that it not only became a buzzword, but also a new way to approach security. So Grady, my first question for you today is a little over 10 years later, why the sudden zero trust renaissance? Is it because of this pivot to remote work? Yeah, I think that it's a really interesting question. You're right, because a lot of the principles behind zero trust have been around for, like in some cases, decades, right? And they even started to come together in the last 10 years, but we hear a lot about it now. And I think there, there's a lot of reasons for that. And we could certainly say it's the, the work from home reality of COVID, but we saw it happening you know, even in years prior to that. But I can tell you like having been in the enterprise in the past, the way a lot of this evolved is we had VPN connectivity for remote work. And I'll fast forward through like a decade of pain here. And then as you set up VPN connectivity, you realize your workers now had access to everything in the enterprise. It was like they were sitting on their network, but then you realize they might be coming from an untrusted device from an untrusted place. So that wasn't tenable. So then you said, well, let's start to put in some rules about what they can access. And I can remember, uh, gosh, 10 years ago in the enterprise, you would end up with what we call like the, you know, the Swiss cheese uh, set of rules where it was like these just holes everywhere in here. And you'd get fed up with that. You'd say, fine, give that person access to like all these apps up here. So all that to say is you just can't manage the kind of access that people need um, by giving them, you know, uh, car launch access and then starting to cut that down with a bunch of difficult to manage firewall rules or VPN rules. So anyway, where we got to is organizations and, and CISOs realized there's gotta be a better way to do this. And that really is the principle of least access. Again, nothing new in security. Um, and so let's do least access. So let's make a secure tunnel so that somebody can kind of access the applications they need from the outside in, but only see the things they need to and only have that direct tunnel from the user sitting at Starbucks to the application they need. So why is it, is it more popular? Certainly a lot more work from home, but it's the realization in the enterprise that we had to do it in a more manageable and a much more secure way. And that's where we are with Zero Trust now. Okay, so people who are watching this, they may think, oh, that sounds really great to have on my security team, but how do I go about adopting this? What are the steps? And also how does identity play into this adoption? Yeah, so zero trust is interesting, you know, it's uh, in that it's not a product and you'll see a lot of vendors trying to sell on the hype of zero trust. But we know that there's no one way to put it together and there's no one vendor that can do it all. But that said, like if I were to, to take the liberty of distilling down to a few key components, you got to have some sort of gateway that authenticates the user. So the authentication is a really important piece, the access management. So you know that this person is who they said they are. And that usually is now done with multi-factor authentication as well. So we'll take that as sort of one big building block is the access. On the other end, you need a way to create like a secure tunnel back to the resources that that user on the outside needs. And that would be through you know, VPN technology. Um, and so a lot of you know, uh, really good vendors out there selling the technology to make that very seamless, right? To, to tunnel right back into the app you need. But there's a really important piece in the middle and that is, well, now someone's authenticated. Now you can create a tunnel to the resources they need how do you know what they're actually entitled to see? Because remember, if we go back to the pain of, of how we got to this point, it was because it was really hard to know what somebody had access to and to give them access to those things. And look, you know, now in short, that's where identity comes into it. And so uh, an organization needs to know exactly who should have access to these things at which times. Uh, so the right people having access to the right things at the right time, with the right security posture. And that's where identity governance comes into play. And that's what SailPoint helps our customers with. Thank you so much for your time today. It was lovely chatting about this. If you want to learn more about Zero Trust, head to the SailPoint blog. There's a ton of resources there for you to view. I'm Natalie Reyna. This is Identity Talks. See you next time.